day ladies and gentlemen and once again we are back together again uh, just looking at that um, November 2018 um, uh, you know exam paper from uh, the IEB all right so um, we're going to be doing that for the purposes of revision uh, of course for those candidates that are writing IEB but um, obviously for those of you that are writing the you know the the Department of Basic Education exam. This is also just a good way of actually going through revision as well. Okay, so please don't be turned off by the fact that it's IB. Uh, ultimately, physics is physics is physics. Okay, um, so if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure that you are part of our family and just make sure that you, you know, you just keep us growing. Okay. And tell more people about uh, this great and wonderful opportunity that you are receiving uh, of having to learn physics in such a remarkably easy way. Right. And uh, by the way, uh, for those of you that may need assistance in mathematics or physics, um, you know, physics or chemistry. Yeah, you can uh, just make sure that you send us an email and our email address is uh, info at mlungisinkosi.co.za. All right, let's get right into this question. Okay, so what I did was uh, to download a, a graph paper because we're going to need it for this here. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't find one that was, you know, just a little bit easier, but nonetheless, it's going to work. All right, they say an astronaut of a planet wants a, uh, to determine the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, the astronaut has a number of different masses available and determines the weight of each mass okay so there it is there they plotted for the different masses the different weights there all right now they say distinguish that uh, distinguish between mass and weight remember that mass is uh, the measure of a body's uh, inertia okay and whilst weight is the force uh, that the earth exerts uh, on a body Okay, that's uh, the force that the Earth attracts, or rather the planet attracts uh, the body weight towards its center. Okay, so that's the difference between the two. Okay, so they say uh, plot a graph of weight on the y-axis, okay, uh, versus mass on the x-axis uh, on the provided, uh, um, yeah, answer sheet. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't, I couldn't uh, actually get that answer sheet. Uh, I tried to source, you know, graph paper, but um, I'm going to use this one here. Uh, I actually actually downloaded it from uh, www.printablepaper.net. Okay, you can get yourself some graph sheets there. Um, yeah, so uh, let's see. So the thing about doing a graph question, uh, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see that uh, quite well. Okay, let me just push this over to this side. The thing about it is to always try and choose a scale that is suitable. Okay, so, you know, so that it fits here and you are uh, you're all able to see it. Uh, I'm not going to draw it right at the bottom there, but I'm just going to start there, you know, label it over there. Right, so here they said it should be my on my X axis. This, sh this should be the mess. So I'm going to have the mass on here, okay, right, I hope you can all see it, uh, that's in kilograms, obviously, and I am going to have, right, so I'm going to take that position there, okay, it's my zero, um, so I'm going to have my zero position over there, and obviously it means on my y-axis, this is going to be my weight, so this is going to be the weight um, in newtons, all right? So that's our weight in newtons. Now, we need to choose a scale uh, that works for us. And I can see this scale here increments in terms of uh, 0 0.1, uh, the mass there. So uh, I'm going to take, actually, for those major divisions there, let me just choose 0 0.1 as my scale. Um, um, so that means this is going to be 0 over there, that's 0 0.1, that's 0 0.2, I think this one was much easier, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. I hope you'll be patient with me, okay, 
so that's 0 0.6 and 0 0.7 and the last one which was 0 0.7 okay we've pushed it right to the end there okay and then uh, on these ones on the y's now you can see you've got between 0 0.3 and 2.7 Okay, so we're going to have to choose a scale over there, uh, you know, and it has to be a scale that works, right? Um, so let's see, if we said, uh, so that would be 2.7, that's less than 3. So if we said, uh, we take, okay, that would be, yeah, it would be 2 compressed. So let's take uh, 1, 2, and 3. Right, so I'm going to take my increment okay for the major lines at 0 0.5 okay meaning that per inch here uh, so if that's going to be 0 0.5 it means each inch is going to be 0 0.005 meaning two of them would give you 0 0.1 okay right so that's going to be from zero I'm going to say well that's 0 0.5 uh, that's one that's 1.5 that's 2, um, that's 2.5, and that is 3. Okay, now let's try and populate our graph. Okay, they said, all right, when you've got a uh, 0 0.1, your, uh, um, your weight would be 0 0.3, so let's start there. Okay, so for 0 0.1, uh, let's count. So that would be 0 0.1. 0.2 and 0.3 so that would be my 0 0.3 point there and then for 0 0.2 we've got 0 0.79 so 0.2 will be 0 0.79 i hope that you'll be patient through this video uh, because there's really nothing much we can do uh, all we are doing is just to draw that graph okay so uh, 0 0.79 that is one there so that would be 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0 0.9. Uh, uh, no, no, no. So that was 0 0.79. So we're saying this is 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Okay. Uh, so 0 0.79 should be somewhere uh, over there. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So 0 0.3. They said it's 1.05 so there's our one there okay uh, and let's see 1.05 should be somewhere there okay remember it becomes 1.1 over uh, that line there and then you've got another one uh, 0 0.4 okay so 0.3 Okay, so we've skipped 1, 0.4 we don't have, we've got 0 0.5, which is 1.9, so we've got 0 0.5, which is 1.9, okay, so 1.5, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, so that is going to be the point over there, okay, hopefully you can still see that. Okay, uh, I'm just going to move this just a bit. Okay, so uh, I've got 2.18 at 0 0.6. So 0 0.6, I've got 2.18. So I've got 2 there, 2.1. That's 2.2. So 2.18 is somewhere there. Okay. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible uh, and 2.7 at 0 0.7 so 2.7 so that's 2.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 so that should be okay right um, as much as possible uh, you can see that's kind of a straight line uh, in a sense so we're going to just plot that uh, graph there uh, I'm just going to pull out a ruler okay and i'm just going to use that uh, to draw our graph all right uh, i'm gonna try and fit it as much as i possibly can 
all right so I don't have all of my points there um, yeah so that's the graph that I get oh I missed that uh, that very last point there uh, but yeah nonetheless you'll extend it to that okay essentially this is the graph that we have right okay so they say to us uh, in the very next question right so I'm just going to try and scramble here for space uh, because I'm trying to show you the question as well as answer it now uh, we've plotted um, now they said to us calculate the gradient uh, of the graph okay so we wanted to now calculate the gradient of the graph right so we can take any of the two points uh, from the graph uh, itself so um, yeah let's do that so you know what I'm going to do I'm going to take actually the last point and the um, very first one okay uh, that we're given so the gradient we just simply say well uh, that would be actually easier so we'll say m is equals to change in weight divided by change in um, uh, mass okay so I'm going to take the last values and the first one so I'm going to say this is 2.7 okay minus the 0 0.3 value divided by uh, they did not specify which one we should use that right yeah so it didn't so in this case uh, divided by so when the weight was 2.7 the mass was 0 0.7 and when the weight was 0 0.3 the mass was 0 0.1 okay so all we need to do is calculate that quickly okay what do we get all right I get a value of 4 okay so if you think about it uh, so uh, what would be the units the appropriate units uh, and that's what they said in the question they say show the values uh, you used on your graph and include the appropriate units in your answer right so think about it so you are taking weight uh, which is a newtons divided by kilograms so this is newton uh, uh, per kilogram but if you think about it what is newton per kilogram so uh, if you think about newton's second law uh, you say force divided by mass this is newtons okay and this is kilograms and so that means a newton per kilogram is actually acceleration right and acceleration would actually be measured in meters per second squared okay right so it means that is the value of our um, gravitational acceleration in fact yeah let's call it g there uh, so that it's clear that it's the gravitational acceleration now they say hence determine the acceleration due to gravity on the planet okay um, in this case remember that uh, we now had the force uh, there we had the weight we had the mass so it means that what would be the gravitational acceleration it would be four meters per second squared okay right um, okay so when I look at that um, I actually uh, it would have been better for me to use the actual graph to calculate that acceleration since you can see this is actually a line of best fit right um, uh, so not all of those points are actually going to be uh, represented there so in this case it would have been actually much more appropriate to to get points on the uh, on the graph but nonetheless I, I hope that you you get the point or you get the gist of what I'm trying to say all right so uh, we got an acceleration of uh, uh, yeah uh, four meters per second something to that effect now the next question says to us uh, use the table G or of G values uh, to answer the questions that follow okay so they are asking which planet is the astronaut on okay uh, I would actually say so if you look at it the closest one there was is Mars which is 3.71 uh, and perhaps if we would have uh, used that line of best fit we would have gotten something even closer to that 
Uh, so in 6.5, uh, the planet there should be should be planet Mars. Okay, right. And the last question, they say the ra the the radius of Pluto. So they are telling us about another planet, right? By the way, that has nothing to do with the previous question. So please don't panic and say, yeah, but we're talking about Mars in the previous one. Um, yeah, so they say the radius of Pluto is 1.1 times 10 to the power 6. Uh, they say determine the mass of Pluto. Now remember, they've given us, uh, uh, for Pluto there, they've given us the gravitational acceleration. Now how do we calculate or how do we relate uh, gravitational acceleration with the radius and the mass of the planet? So remember, we say that G is equals to gravitational, uh, universal gravitational constant, the mass of Pluto, okay, so I'm just going to say GP, divided by the radius of Pluto, but remember we square that, right? So we already have gravitational acceleration, which is 0 0.58, okay, and our gravitational, universal gravitational constant, that's going to be 6.67, times 10 minus 11 uh, to the power minus 11 multiplied by the mass which is what we're looking for of Pluto and we said divided by the radius and our radius was given as 1.19 okay times 10 to the power 6 please you must make sure that that's in meters and remember to square that okay so let's do our mathematical gymnastics. So what I'm going to do is just make that to be divided by 1, multiply that there, and divide by 6.67. So I'm going to say 0 0.58 times 1.19 uh, times 10 to the power minus, uh, sorry, to the power 6 rather, uh, to the power 6. Okay, and remember we said we square that. Okay. And what do we... Okay, and divide that by 6.67. Okay, so what do we get? Get a value. The mass of Pluto is 1.23. Okay, times 10 to the power 22. That's kilograms. Okay, all right, and that is how the cookie crumbles, ladies and gents. I hope you were able to follow on, okay, uh, on this question. Quite an interesting question, and I hope that you've been assisted. All right, and uh, yeah, once again, please remember to subscribe to our channel and just follow us on this week. We're just going to be trying to dish out those good, good lessons uh, for the IEB in particular. All right, and please just make sure you invite as many people as you can. All right, and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.